Welcome back. I am Dr. Ruckus, and today we are playing Grixis in Ranked Standard. Made a couple tweaks to the deck since the last time I played it. Number one, we have taken out the Blade Coil Serpent. Yes, it's a fun new shiny card, but it's six mana. You just don't need it. Your three, fours, and fives are already so impactful and powerful. You really don't need to be diluting your hand with six drops that are harder to cast when you, everything that's cheaper already does such a great job anyway. We've also taken out Teferi Temporal Program. I think this card actually is pretty solid and uh, certainly if you're behind can be obnoxious to play against. But in terms of things that just absolutely devastate your opponent the turn they come down, it's hard to be Invoke Despair. This is named so correctly as it really does Invoke Despair when it hits the battlefields. And between the two, I think it's better to just go all in on the Invoke Despair plan. So if we're going to be doing that, that means we have to tweak the mana base as well and play predominantly black mana sources. So I also took out Shivan Reef. I don't think you need this card in the deck. We're really only splashing blue for a couple of make disappears for a little bit of counter magic in there, as well as the Corpse Appraiser, which adds a ton of value over the course of the game. Um, and everything else pretty much makes black, except for the two uh, legendary lands, Odawara and Sokenzin. Other things in the deck, we're running four Fables, of course, just extremely powerful. And pair as well with the Harvester, running a 3-1 split here between mostly Harvesters to pair with the Fable, but also one Underdog in there for that recursive value. We're also running two copies of Brotherhood End. This card is extremely good against Wide Board, like all these soldiers running around. I think two is about right. It doesn't kill things like Shouldered, so you don't want too many in the deck. And even if it is dead in some matchups, you can always cycle it away with Fable or Harvester tokens. Also running four cutdowns, I think this is extremely important in decks that run uh, Trilands because even if you, right, if your curve ends up being awkward because you have to fit in this tap land somewhere, it's nice to have some really cheap interaction to fill out the curve. The rest of the deck, pretty standard. Two Infernal Grass, two Cove for the Throat. That's the deck. Enjoy the gameplay. Let's dive right in. One lander. Let's freaking go. Okay, looking much better. No red. Oh, do we melt a five? We play Bankbuster on two. Take the draw. We have Brothers would end. So we could survive. Just brutal. Um man. Invoke despair we could actually cast. I think it has to be like this though. We need to keep our options open, even though we don't have any red. Alright. Cross your fingers, boys. Draco spike. Okay. Well, I think we're just taking the uh draw option. Try to hit more land. Means no infernal grasp open on two. But we're on the play, so we got a little bit of time here. Harvester it is. Pressure online. We hit removal. Good draw for red mana source. It's kind of interesting. I guess we can wait to see what they do here. So if it's a tap land, we'll really want it now. I think we just take three. It's a little bit awkward. Okay, we hit the red mana source. That's nice. If it was one of our uh, Tri-Lands, I really wanted to get that down. We could use the red mana next turn. We need double red to cast Brotherhood in, though. Maybe that's actually what we should have put back on the mulligan. Obnixilis. Joy. We get a pretty nice Brotherhood, Brotherhood end if we can um, hit red, though. We could hit it off Fable. Decline. Okay, that, is, that actually allows us to hit red easily here. I think we play that out. It doesn't play as well with Brotherhood End. The other option is to play the Fable here. Hope it survives and then attack. That's riskier. We have a better chance of hitting red with the Corpse Brazer. We're going to assume they minus the Obnixilis next too, which isn't guaranteed. There's a creature in the graveyard. I think I'm open for this. I think we're trying to appraise into red. Down to 13 already. Take the Harvester. We hit the red source. Very nice. Okay. Uh, we could attack with the Bank Buster, force them to block here. I think that's okay. They will block then. Maybe they'll force them to make another block or break Obnix list down. Let's go ahead and do it. Because I want them to minus the Obnix list so that it is um, in range of Brotherhood End. All right, we drop down to 12 now. Okay, let's see what's next. They take the minus. That's what we want. Decline down to 10. One of them might be stuck on land, though. So is that invoke? Uh, is that make disappear? I guess we can pay for it, right? So suppose... I guess we can pay for the first thing. If they copy it, we can't. 
But then they lose their creature and we swing down one of these anyway, so it's not that bad. Hmm. I'll just pick it off with the Inferno Grasp and attack one of these down. Alright, let's just go ahead and go for this here. Let's see how they want to play it. Drop to nine, though. Let's see if they copy and make to spear. So they do. And this is interesting because um, we just let it go. And then we still get to attack down one of them. This is honestly a decent outcome for us anyway. Decline. Resolve. Okay. So we get to attack down one of these anyway. Unless they have, what, Voltage Surge? That would sting. Looks like not, though. Alright, so one of these goes down, and we hold both the Bankbuster draw and the Grasp. Down to 8, though. Doesn't feel good. Now, they they missed their land drop. That's our one saving grace. So they cycle here and look for land. Drop off an overly expensive Blade Quill Serpent, which I don't think belongs in the best version of that deck. Just because it's too expensive. There are so many good cards in the 1 to 4 drop slot. I don't think you need to play 6 drops to win. Alright, are we eating? Uh, we could drop off land at this point. We're getting low. We already have enough mana to do everything we need. Okay, that's fine. Resolve. Alright, we take our draw here. Well, we can Brothers End the Obnix list. Because we don't have enough to power up the Bank Buster. So I think that's where we're going here. Creatures and Planeswalkers. And play out a Fable. Drop down to 7. We've got a Fable, a Bank Buster, and two removal spells for Shouldred that both bring us down lower in life. Yep. There is Shelly. We are ready for it, though. So there it goes. Down to 5. We'll take the draw here. More land. We'll definitely discard you. I think we need the Infernal Grasp around. More land ain't it, though. We're going to take the draw with the Bank Buster. Go ahead and do it now, I think. It's fine. Sheltered of our own. If they run Sweepers, they run Burn Down the House. But it's only a one of. I think we play it out here. Okay, show me that one of Burn Down the House. There's also plenty of um, Infernal Grasp, I'm sure. Decent chance they have a answer here. Okay, Fable instead. It's pretty good for us. They're giving us a chance. Question is, um, that's a nice draw. I think you're as good a cut down target as any. And uh, I guess we can power up the Bank Buster since we're out of draws anyway. Crew here. Okay. Swing. Well, opponent has plenty of cards in hand, but they didn't have the answer to Shouldered on upkeep. We'll see if they can hit a uh, fifth land and still go burn down the house. That is a distinct possibility. And they get a double draw here. So they can fish for answers, but that does knock them down via the Shouldered. So let's see if they go for it. They do. Okay. Resolve those triggers. Feels good. When it drops to two, do they have the answer? Again, if we top deck a three drop, we can power up the bank plus. It's just cut down there. Okay. What else you got for four mana? That means we're not burning down the house this turn. So I think we got them. Cut down there. Okay. Still not looking like enough. Unless you have one more cut down and a uh, drop to zero. All right. Good game. Pretty decent comeback there. We're definitely uh, on the ropes off the bat. On the play with good mana. Let's freaking go. Drop you first. Untap Swamp on two. Into Harvester or Underdog. Wanna on Grixis. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to go Harvester here. It's always tough to say because if they run the turn three. If they run the turn three vampire that takes a card out of the graveyard. It never feels good to have the Underdog in there so early. So maybe we'll see if we can get that out of the way first before slamming the underdog. Okay, opponent on do nothing. Hey, if they use a uh, infernal grasp here, then 
We're happy about that. Means uh, more Sheldreds will survive. They eat it all here. We play out the underdog, and we might... Man, it's tempting to cycle into the fourth land draw. But to really give up... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Do we really give up our answer to Sheldred or the Sheldreds themselves? That's a tough pill to swallow. Fourth land means a lot, though. Without fourth land, we're not doing a whole lot. We'll see what they do. If they play out a desirable creature to remove, maybe we do nothing. Yeah, so there's the appraise. This is why I didn't love putting the underdog down, but that's how it is sometimes. They take you. So we don't have to cycle anything this turn. I think it's all too good to cycle. It's either must kill threats or kill anything responses. So I think we're just going to not cycle and take the Infernal Grasp play this turn. We have the next land anyway. So we can Infernal Grasp and hold the next one. Or we can just get the first Shelter down. I think I'm okay with that here. And no attacks as we have removal to burn anyway. Let's we'll see if opponent has the response off the bat. Looks like they do. That's okay. We got three more to go. One of them in hand. They hit their land drop. See if they offer the trade here. They are down to 16. They do. I think we go no blocks. We are currently the aggressor. They play out a harvester of their own. Fine. Odawara. I think we just want to drop the next Sheldred. If they have backup harvester, they kill, can't, still can't pick off the Sheldred. I think that's fine. We'll keep hitting land here. I don't think we need to bounce anyone. Both those targets are bad bounce targets anyway. Do we want to trade Harvesters off? It opens us up to Invoke Despair. Which I don't love. I think we're going no attacks here. Because they already have all the black mana they need. So if they go land, Invoke Despair, and they trade Harvesters, then we just lose the Shouldered, which doesn't feel good. So no instant speed removal this time. Jelly sticks. Alright, so I guess they can do that anyway. We'll still see if they go land, Invoke Despair. Which would suck the big one. There's the fifth land. Consider the big one sucked. <laughs> Oh, great. Uh, okay, recycling a frontal grass, probably not. Just lovely. Okay. Yes, opponent is the first one to invoke despair. Always a feels good. We have lots of removal though, which has some value. I don't think recycling anything. They run make disappear. I guess we don't care. So maybe we wait till their turn. Don't think there's any reason not to. But we're going to do this anyway. Alright. So you're going down. If you chain the next Invoke Despair, I'm going to be so sad. Fable instead. We don't have a counter. Not that it would uh, go through the mana payment anyway. Oh, uh, we have to kill this thing? Maybe. It makes mana every turn. They already have all the mana they need, though. Maybe we have to save you for uh, their Shelly instead. That's not it. Go ahead and cycle you. That's interesting. That deals with a number of things. Okay. And here. Oh, man. That uh, turn five hit land, kill our creature, play invoke despair. Not good for us. And they get the nice cycle here. Not looking good, friends. We're going to eat the damage this turn. And uh, we could kill um, artifacts as well. Trade off both of our blood tokens. Okay, interesting. So we really want to wait one more turn, but then we take five. Drop to three. The thing is, Infernal Grasp saves us only a tiny bit of damage anyway. We could cycle one Infernal Grasp. Because we're going to be so low anyway, we probably can't use both. So we're going to cycle one. We want to Brotherhood end their entire board. Fable. Double Fable. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, we could play out one of these. We lose the token. We get the, the draw next turn. I'm willing to indulge that. We also don't have double red anyway. So we actually need the, we need the treasure off the Fable. We'll see if they just cut it down immediately anyway. Okay, let it resolve. It looks like they were thinking about a little make disappear there. Potentially dropping off a token of their own, but they decide not to. Immediately cut down, looks like. Joy. Joy, joy, joy. 
Okay, so now we just need to top deck the second red source. No problem. When it swings for five, drops us to two. I don't think we're burning the Infernal Grass. We're uh, praying to hit that next red mana source. Down to three. Okay. Untapped red. Never didn't have it. Oh, oh, we get a draw here. We get a draw here. Infernal Grass is getting worse and worse, right? Maybe we keep the Fable instead. Yikes. Never didn't have it. Okay. That looks like game to me. <laughs> Did not get there. Oh, man. I mean, the first to invoke despair is just always brutal if it's not you. On the play with removal and no red. I think we can keep it. Bankbuster can smooth out the draw a little bit. Question is, do we hold cut down on one? Or just get our tap land down? I think I'd rather get the tap land down. We'll find we'll find space for cut down eventually. Mono black, alright. Well, we gotta start drawing. So we have to hit land or perish. When it lands the underdog. I mean, if we draw into a black source, it's pretty... I mean, we have to hit land. We have to hit land or we lose. So, I think we have to draw here. We don't hit land. Troll Bucolico. About to get in for some sweet free damage here. Drop to 17. They hit their third land. That's okay. Trespasser. Nothing in the graveyard, though. So just playing it to play it. We hit the next land. It is tapped, though. We can at least... We got some cards to burn here. So I think we're going to go for the throw the Trespasser, I suppose. Flip the night side, though. Nothing in the graveyard, anyway. Alright. Yeah, that's all fine. Okay. So we're going to pick you off and drop off one of our... We can keep one Harvester here. Do we need cut down at this stage of the game? Maybe it's one cut down instead. It's all pretty good. Yeah, we can drop off one cut down, I think. Down to 14. Fourth land. It's Shelly time. Okay, we take the draw. We do not hit removal. We can play our own Sheldred, though. So if we play our own Sheldred and they immediately remove it, we just lose the game. Maybe. But do we even have an option? I don't think we do. Because the Fable draws Sting with Sheldred anyway. So, we're just praying that of the four copies, they don't have any removal. They also invoked Spare. I mean, we've got a low chance of, of survival here. Plaza of Heroes, a little sneaky one of coming out. Let's see if they just invoke Despair to the face. Interesting. Of all the one ofs, Soul Transfer. Yeah, okay. Well, go ahead and crew you so we have a blocker for the underdog. Still take four off the Sheldra, though. Now, Blar, she blows. No blocks. Down to eight. Ooh, if only we had land. Okay. Interesting. So all we have to do is hit land. So we can cycle for land. Who'd go harvester and cycle and block with the bank buster, maybe? Okay. That's the best play. We could also go fable. We can't block with the bank buster. I think we want to be able to block with the bank buster. I think we're playing the harvester here. And ideally, they don't remove anyone now. And here we want them to be able to attack with the underdog first before we kill it so they can't just play it back from the graveyard with blitz and um put on more pressure royalty of gix so they can only take a creature here right creature or planeswalker fine they tapped out though let's see if they just skip the first step though nope no creatures or planeswalkers for you this does make our life very awkward here but we might land and evoke despair okay two attackers they leave back the underdog. Uh, which means they don't have to kill it with the cut down, but that's probably our best play anyway. So then the question is, um, yeah, we want to we want to do this no matter what, actually. So you're dead. The question is, we block with the harvester or the bank buster. 
After we invoke despair, do we want to keep drawing? We're going to need more answers. Maybe we're blocking with the harvester and we keep the bank buster around. Let's go ahead and take this draw first. Because that's got to happen. I guess we're dropping off a fable. Drop down to four. We now have go for the throat. A little bit late, but that's okay. And yeah, I think we'd rather chump here. Keep the draw power alive. Okay. So now we have to hit land, or we lose. Actually, we have, we have go for the throat now, so we'll survive another turn. But ideally, we hit land and invoke despair. We don't. Okay, so we have to do this now. Ugh. Down to two, opponent has the flashback underdog, so we just lose if they play it. I guess we don't have to let them know that, though. So we end here. Didn't quite get there. Maybe it would have been similar regardless. I mean, even if we had played Invoke Despair, I guess we're in a very similar position. When it selects card of their choice, it's corrupt. All right, I mean, we'll give it to them. What are we going to do? It's one of those days, man. On the play, decent mana. Uh, yeah, we can start here. Planes, Recruitment, Officer. Well, we got some answers lined up, and we're on the play, so... Not the worst start we could have. Frontliner it is, not a Thalia. Okay. Yeah, we'll pick you off, save a little bit of damage. Also sets us up for a Corpse Appraiser this turn. I am down for all of that. Hit the next land for Shelly anyway. Take the officer. Get the draw. We're good on land. Yeah, I'll just take more removal here. Okay, very strong start. Siege veteran. They have a 2-2. Not enough to get through the corpse brazer. And the question is, do we just pick off all their resources now? Or do we Shelly? If we Shelly, they can Brutal Cathar, and then we just pick it off and blow them out later. You can put more counters on this, make it a 3-3. It's still not enough to get through Sheldred. Let's make them have the Cathar here. And sit back. And even if they have the Cathar, we have double removal lined up. We do want to pick off the Veteran first. Um, yeah. They don't trade the Veteran, though. Are we blocking here? I don't think so. Set this up for a better blowout next turn. What's, what's going to happen next turn? Next turn, we pick off the Veteran, and we pick off the Cathar, and we block the Frontliner anyway. So maybe we are trading here. They do get a 1-1 one -one out of the deal. But we can hopefully um, pick that off with the surprise children. Morland is fine. We could go Fable here instead, but I think we want to pick off both the Veteran and the Cathar this turn. Up the night side. Sky Strike Officer. Okay. I guess we can let them move to combat here. Put the token on the officer. Hmm. I think I want to do this before they put the counter on the flyer. Alright. See if they attack all. We can pick off one of them with the um, Sheldred here. Hey. Take five life here. Yep. Down to 16. Get the Shelly. Get our free block. Not bad. And they deploy Thalia. I think we're leaving that land in hand. And we'll cycle it next turn with the Fable. Now we just sit. They have the next Cathar, okay. Should swing with both there. Unless they really want the draw, I guess. That is a nice draw. So we'll still drop the land off, I think. It's okay. And you're going to get swept anyway, so we might as well attack and get the treasure. Yeah, they take their free block. And they'll get the draw off anyway, but this is going to sting. Creatures and Planeswalkers. That is why it is in the deck for this exact matchup. 
and ideally it can be cycled away in the matchups where you don't need it. But they get the draw off. Okay. Let's see if they can hit that third Cathar. They cannot. Scooping to the Brotherhood end. On the play, good mana. A couple gaps on the curve, but cut down should hopefully... Um, I guess we're going to get you down on two. We could hit a two drop, though. I'm okay with this. We'll start here. They have a one drop. Um, we can always double cut down next turn. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so we'll go Swamp here. Um, we're going to cut you down regardless. Doesn't matter if they get the cast off first. Yeah. Let's we'll go double, double cut down this turn. All right. Efficiency is good. Nice. Great draw. Drop the Fable. And we have a pretty beautiful setup. Spirit Companion. That's not pressure. They missed their land drop as well. Now we're pretty good with all this. We could drop off one Sheldred, but it's good in general. Go ahead and get our free attack off. We could even invoke Despair here, which is kind of interesting. But I don't think that's worth it. Yeah, let's wait till we can pick off two of their creatures, I think. Let's say. One Shelly down. Naturalist. See if they're still stuck on land. They are. Okay. I think I'm down to attack all here. See what they want to do. They eat it and we go invoke despair. Seems okay. And they scoop. I mean, that was a pretty solid first five turns. I don't blame you.